Hey guys, part one of understanding Adobe Encore, and we find ourselves in Adobe Premiere. I can understand why you might already be a little bit confused. The most important thing about DVD authoring is you have to stick to the codes and conventions. Now, anybody that knows me knows that I'm not the sort of person that happily goes along with every code and convention, except this one, you haven't got any choice. You've got to create a DVD that will work on any DVD player. If you don't create that, then you know, what's the purpose of creating the DVD? You give your DVD to somebody, they can't watch it. You've given them that DVD maybe to promote yourself. You're no longer promoting yourself. That's like making a website that only you can look at. And there really isn't any point in doing that. Why would you have a website for just yourself? You know? So, we're in Adobe Premiere Pro, so we can start to understand a few of the codes and conventions. And even if we don't understand them, we need to know them. And that's quite critical here. Now... When you watch a video on a DVD player, it comes out in a format called MPEG-2. Now the video file might be a .m2v file, or it might be a .mpeg file. Now a .mpeg would contain both the video and the audio within one file, whereas a .m2v video would actually contain the video file as a .m2v, and then the audio would come in as a .wav. So let's have a look at how to export our video from Premiere. On my timeline I've got a little clip of video that I made. I'm just playing right now for you. Just having a little bit of a spin about. Okay, um, that goes on for a while. So I want to export that into a file format that I can use in Encore. So file export, export media. Okay, and then it comes up and we're in our export settings box and it probably as custom as default comes up as Microsoft AVI under NTSC. Now we want to set it to MPEG-2 as I've previously stated. There's two options here, MPEG-2 or MPEG-2 DVD. Now if you choose the MPEG-2 DVD, that's where it splits the video and audio files for you. Mostly because when it goes onto the DVD, it will split the audio and video and then resync it as it goes along. But I've also never had any problems using MPEG-2, which is actually quite a bit easier to use. So I'm going to select MPEG-2 purpose of this. Now it loads up on a preset of 1440 by 1080 i which is high definition, which you know I am nowhere near. So I'm going to go for PAL DV high quality, and then I'm then going to customize it. So when I want to export the video and the audio, I'm going to make sure both of those are ticked. I'm going to set the quality to 5. That's the most crucial part of all of it. Set the quality as high as you can and then you know worry about everything else a little bit later on. Uh, PAL we're on PAL video rather than NTSC because we're in England. Uh, England, Europe, for example. Um, our frame rate is 720 by 576 because that is the dimensions of the screen. The frame rate is 25. The field order is lower first. And we are working in widescreen. So the pixel aspect ratio is 1.42 or 1.45 as the new Premiere now says. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, the field order is lower. You can have no field order at all, progressive, but it often works better with Encore if you set the field order to lower. Now, you can set it up for CBR, VBR 1 pass, or VBR 2 pass. Difference between them, if you go for VBR 2 pass, you get 1, you get better quality video, 2, it'll take twice as long to encode. So, it's up to you, depending on how long you've got. Now, this video itself is only like 13 seconds long or something crazy. So mine won't take very long to encode. If you've got a two hour long video that you want to encode, then that could go on and take, you know, two, three, four hours to encode. So be very aware of that. <clears throat> After you've set up what bitrate encoding pass you're going for, you've got a minimum, a target, and a maximum bitrate. Now this is quite critical. Any DVD player that you have in your home, when they were created, they were standardized across the whole world that they would not be able to play more than 9.5 megabytes per second. So under maximum bitrate, you really want to put that at 9.4, just to make sure that at no point is your bitrate going to go over 9.5. Now if you're creating an MPEG video for the internet, then you can go as high as you want, because YouTube or whatever you upload it to is probably going to recompress it anyway. But if you're working for a DVD format, as in the actual disc that you're going to take off and put in the player, it can't go above 9.5, so keep it at 9.4. Under target, I set mine to 8, and then under minimum, I set mine to 7. 
that means that it's working between 7 megabytes per second and 9.4 megabytes per second, which means my quality is going to be really good. If I wanted it to be even better, I could set my minimum to 9 and my target to like 9.2, my maximum at 9.4. It's going to be really good quality then, the best, pretty much the best quality that I can get on a DVD disc. Note at the bottom of the screen it says estimated file size 14 megabytes. Now, if that goes above like 4.5 gigabytes, you're going to be in trouble because the DVD disc will only hold 4.7. So, always keep your eye on that. You might need to tweak your minimum and your target accordingly to make sure that your video files are the right size. I mean, if you're just exporting it in MPEG to keep a copy for yourself for archive purposes, whack the quality up as much as your storage will allow. Under advanced settings, we can go through all that, but that's all quite new in CS4 to be honest, and it doesn't really mean a great lot to me. The M and N frames, M and N, uh, that's all about groups of pictures, but again, we don't really need to go into that. 3 over 12 looks good, and always seems to work quite fine. So, the most important things, we are quality 5 with PAL, we're 720 by 576 got a frame rate of 25 with lower field first, we are widescreen. We're going to work at 9 for the minimum megabit, minimum bit rate, 9.2 for the target, and 9.4 for the maximum. Last thing to do is set the location of where it's going. On a CS4, you click on output name. On CS3, I'm pretty sure it asks you somewhere else. This is quite important as to where you're saving it. Now, I'm going to shove it in my folder that I've got set up for this. But you guys need to make sure that you've got a good folder, a good place where you know you're going to be able to find it. See, I've got an Encore folder, and I'm now going to make a new folder called Exports. I could even call it MPEGs. Exports or MPEGs, let's call it MPEGs. Now, I know in future that all of I can store all my MPEGs in here, so I know where to look for my exports. Rather than having one export folder for every project I do, I tend to have one overriding export folder and then put all my different exports within that folder. So let's call this uh, moving tree, because that's kind of what it is. And I'm going to click OK, and it's going to export the data then into the movie encoder, quite possibly. I'm not too sure what CS4 does. There we go, we're going to Movie Encoder. And then from there, it's going to export the video to that location I did. Now, if you were in CS3, it would have straight away, as soon as you clicked OK, it would have started exporting the video, and it would be straight out to that location. So right now it's waiting, and uh, if I click Start Queue, it's then going to go through that video, and quite shortly, I will have the MPEG video. Alright, so that's it for this one. I've now shown you how to export a video. You might want to export a few videos if you can look at making a portfolio, or you could potentially just export one. But for the purpose of the following tutorials, you're going to need at least one video. The more you've got, the better it'll be for you. Alright, this one's over.